Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be reading you a story called A Walking Shadow from True Crime Case Histories Volume 1 to 3 book. Miles Fukunaga was the 19-year-old eldest son of a Japanese family with seven kids. By all accounts, Miles was a quiet, responsible Japanese boy who stayed out of trouble and worked hard to support his family. As the oldest of the large family, much responsibility fell upon Miles. Miles' father worked long hours, but it wasn't enough for the family to survive. Miles had to drop out of high school to work to support the family. He worked 80 hours weeks at Queen Hospital, but it still wasn't enough. The family was several months behind on their rent, and the stress was building in Miles. Twice, he thought he would be better off dead and had attempted suicide. He even failed at that task which added to his humiliation and embarrassment. Miles also suffered from a degenerative dissociative disorder. He had mental issues that were handled differently in those days. They were brushed under the rug. One morning, there was a knock on the family's front door. When his mother answered the door, Miles could hear her arguing with a representative from the Hawaiian Trust Company. They were there again to collect back rent, but the family simply didn't have it. The rent was $35 per month, and when they missed several month payments, the fees piled on, making the bill unbearable. This fueled the anger inside Miles. In recent years, Miles had been following two crimes that were in the news. The first was that of Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb, two teenage boys who kidnapped and killed a young boy using a chisel to beat him over the head and then sent a ransom letter to his rich father. After kidnapping Miles, followed was perpetrated by William Hickman. Hickman had kidnapped a young girl by showing up at her school. Posing as an employee of the girl's father, he told teachers the girl's father was in a terrible accident and she needed to come with him. Hickman then demanded a ransom from the girl's father and ultimately killed her. Miles thought he could combine these two crimes to commit the perfect crime. Miles called the Paneo school and asked to speak to the register. He told the register he was calling from the Queen hospital. He claimed that Guile Jameson's mother had been in a terrible car accident and they were sending a car immediately to pick up the boy. Using a uniform from the hospital where he worked, Miles posed as a hospital orderly and hired a taxi cab to take him to the school of Guile Jameson, the 10-year-old son of Frederick Jameson. Frederick Jameson was vice president of the Hawaiian Trust Company. Guile's teacher and the principal of the school later told police that there was nothing unusual about the young Japanese man that picked up Guile's. Their only description was that he was Japanese. Japanese had slicked back hair and black glasses. Frederick Jameson soon received a ransom note from Miles peppered with strange Shakespeare quotes from Macbeth. Quote, life but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then heard no more. Unquote. It seemed that Miles was dramatically referencing his desperation and lack of will to live. The ransom note demanded $10,000 for the safe release of his son. But Miles had no intention of releasing the young boy. Before the Jameson family had a chance to respond to the ransom, Miles took Giles behind Seaside Hotel, where the International Marketplace now stands on Kalakwai Avenue, just opposite the Royal Hawaiian Hotel to a grouping of kiwi trees. There he took a hardened steel chisel, similar to what he had read that Leopold and Loeb used, and beat the boy over the head, then strangled him to death. When the media heard about the missing boy, the entire island of Uheu was on alert. Racial tensions flared because the young boy was white and the kidnapper was said to be Japanese. Japanese businesses had to close because they were getting threats from white people. Everyone was looking for the boy. The Ohio school let out early and 20,000 students joined in the search for Giles across the island. The Jamesons had a chauffeur they had fired some weeks prior and he became the first suspect. Harry Kazin was arrested and brought in for questioning and was put under the influence of a truth serum. In those days, people believed that Hysokine hydrobromide would force people to tell them the truth. Amazingly, it is still used in some parts of the world today, but Kazan was ultimately found innocent and released. Frederick Jameson received a phone call from the kidnapper. The man said to meet him at a band concert on Thompson Square and to bring $4,000 and he would give up the boy. No cops. Jameson did as he was told and didn't tell the police. Miles showed up wearing a black mask, took the money from Jameson and disappeared into the crowd 
without saying a word about the boy. Jameson had paid the $4,000 in $5 bills and being a banker, he made a note of the serial numbers. Police alerted local businesses to watch for the bills and it wasn't long before Miles was caught trying to buy a train ticket with the money. When apprehended, Miles quickly confessed. About the same time that Miles was arrested, the body of Giles Jameson was found in Waikiki. Miles had covered his body with newspaper and a piece of cardboard. On the cardboard, Miles wrote, quote, If you want to die, you have the right to kill others, so you, in turn, will be killed. The devil it is for you to decide, unquote. The rest of Miles Fukunanga ignited outrage throughout the island. 20,000 people gathered outside the jail after his arrest. Police called the fire department to deal with the massive mob and sprayed seven streams of water at the crowds to try to get them to disperse. The angry mob demanded a swift and powerful punishment. Swift it was. Police could not handle the pressure from the public and wanted the whole ordeal over with as quickly as possible, and it seems that Miles wanted the same. Miles Fukunanga was arrested, tried, convicted, and sentenced to hang within three weeks. Fukunaga was examined quickly by three psychiatrists, appointed by the police for only 90 minutes. At that time, the examinations normally took several days, but police were feeling the pressure and needed to rush to judgment. Psychiatrists determined that he was competent and ready to stand trial. Miles Fukunanga freely admitted his guilt and asked specifically to be hanged, and the prosecution was more than happy to oblige. In a gross violation of his rights, his two court-appointed public defenders offered no defense at all and called no witnesses, though he admitted to killing the boy. Fukunanga was not allowed to enter a guilty plea. They wanted him hanged and forced him to plead not guilty. A Navy psychiatrist offered to enter his testimony for the defense, but was denied. The jury appointed to the case included members of the search party, the man who dug the boy's grave, and even Frederick Jameson's personal bodyguard. Despite several attempts for an appeal to show that Fukunanga was mentally unable to stand trial, they denied all requests. The crime and conviction opened large divisions on Ueu between the whites and the Japanese. Japanese families throughout Hawaii felt a sense of fear and resentment for years after the crime. Fukunaga's family were constantly harassed and moved to Maui to escape the ostracization. Miles Fukunaga was ultimately convicted of first-degree murder and hanged at Oheo Prison on November 19, 1929, just two months after he kidnapped and killed Giles Jameson. The story of the killing is still told as a ghost story every Halloween to this day in Hawaii. University of Hawaii professor Dr. Lockwood Myrick to the then-governor Farrington over 90 years ago. Quote, Until we have understood his personality so thoroughly and the circumstances of his life so fully that we can actually feel how he came to act as he did, we have not given him the defense to which he is morally entitled. We cannot discover to what extent society is to blame for his hideous crime or what social changes we should endeavor to bring about. Unquote. Thank you for listening. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing and liking my channel, and I will see you on the next one.